All right. Hello, world. Here we are, Paul Tranny here, uh, sponsored by Nike. Not really, but uh, in general, you guys should be able to hear me okay. I'm going to just dive into tricking out Illustrator and Photoshop for performance and adding some cool scripts is the plan. So... Uh, music might be a little hot. I'm going to turn that down a touch. There we go. Kanal, Azir, Ihajo. What's up, buddy? Jim, how you guys doing? Yeah, I am in a room. Um, at home, actually. So, uh, let me know where you guys are from. From beautiful Colorado, gonna be here. Uh, awesome, Drew's making a logo right now, buddy. So this is good, so we can kind of go through some of this. It'll be kind of cool, so. Alexandra, Alexandre, how you doing? Mutra Media. All right, let's get this started now. So, let me know where you guys are from. Brazil's in the house, Wales, Utah. Utah was just there for the uh, Spartan race a couple weeks ago. Kuwait, I was not there. Uh, I've not been to Kuwait. Hola from Spain, it's been a while. Fantastic. Uh, thanks for joining us as far as ways Denmark. I know it must be pretty late for you, so I appreciate that. Uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Awesome, man. Govina. I uh, would love to go there because I would love to go to all of the sort of like Eastern Europe uh, countries. So Lebanon in the house. Mark will be in San Francisco next week. I'll be there Monday. We're going to do three days of live streaming. Uh, yeah, all about uh, basically XD. So uh, All right, so let's just check this chat. Uh, hopefully you guys are hitting share. I'm gonna just check this as well. Let's just double check this. Where is the link? Cool. All right, so we're gonna dive into this, guys. I'm gonna talk about Illustrator first, then I'm gonna dive into Photoshop if that works for you. All right, Illustrator will be a little straightforward. There's obviously, there's gonna be lots of plugins and different things that we can use for it. So uh, that's the plan. Okay, so Brazil does rule. I'm going to be in Brazil, by the way. I go from San Francisco Monday, and then by Saturday, I'm in. I'm, I'm having, having a caparina in uh, Sao Paulo. Hopefully, I'm saying that right. And uh, so, all right. XD next week, guys. Just keep, keep your eyes out. I'm switching over to uh, my screen. You can see right here. Again, pretty straightforward, right? Um... Honestly, maybe one of the easiest things to do is to kind of get familiar with, you know, when you create a new file to make sure this is set up appropriately. There are templates within Illustrator, of course, to get you up and running fast, but I'm going to dive into the preferences. Okay. So I'm going to turn off this right here because what it, this says is this says use legacy file new interface. And that's actually what I do to optimize. I'm, I'm not crazy. I don't really need to worry about using the um, the new file, new interface. But when I change it to the new file, new interface, this takes a second to load. So anytime I just have to, I have this delay, I wanna get rid of it, right? So this is great for beginners because you have all these fantastic templates that are free. But once you get into it and you're looking to optimize Illustrator, you don't even need to worry about this dialog. So you can go ahead and, go ahead and close it by diving into the preferences, and that's right here. Just use the legacy file new. So file new, you're in and good to go. The other thing I actually change um, a lot is right in here. Joop, 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 joop. I usually scale strokes and effects, okay? So I turn this on and off just uh, in terms of uh, what I'm trying to do, whether it's an interface or artwork. Caperina, Caperina, thank you so much, Alexandra. I knew I was saying it wrong. Caperina, Caperina, thank you so much, man. Will you be my consultant? Because I'm also working on Obrigado. 
I need to learn how to say all my phrases in in Portuguese. So, all right. So, uh, a couple of things we could do. Uh, right in here, we can kind of go through some of these in terms of optimizing Illustrator. I make it as easy as possible to select points. You know, I don't know if you guys do this, but like I need to make these anchor handles as large as possible. So I always make sure there I have these end ones selected. They're always going to be open, right? So uh, I can hide the anchors on. Um, um, yeah, so there's a lot I can do here. I can actually show the anchor points in the selection tool. Um, so let's move on from there. Okay, let's dive into... Most of these things are actually going to be set up just fine. Um, you can get into the GPU performance. We want to make sure that's turned on, of course. Use the hardware as opposed to the software. I have animated zoom turned on because it looks cool, but you can always uncheck that as you're dealing with larger files. Okay. Uh, all right, so let me just click OK and move right along. Let me actually open up a different image, one that's actually pretty complex because... Let's grab this one. I think this has lots of layers to it. Something I've just vectorized. So I went to uh, Illustrator Preferences to answer your question, Drew. Uh, awesome, man. And you're working on a logo. I want to show you how you can do some like logo variations would be kind of fun. There is the color themes panel, which you might be aware of. I kind of want to show you a couple like plugins. Might be the idea. Uh, by the way, Jeremy, what software I broadcast? I have uh, two software uh, programs that I use. There's OBS and then there's also um, good old Wirecast. OBS, Open Broadcast Software, is free. And then there's Wirecast, which is the paid version. To be honest with you, I've had issues with Wirecast, so I've actually switched back to OBS. In fact, if you want to know what it looks like, it's right here. It's going to get kind of trippy, but this is OBS that's actually running on another screen. Okay, so I have dual screens, OBS running. Zoop, bring that back over there. Uh, specs on my laptop, pretty simple, guys. It's not that complex. It is a fairly new... Um, uh, MacBook Pro, but two two point seven gigahertz uh, Intel Core. You get the idea. Sixteen gigs of uh, RAM. Everybody got that. Everybody got the serial number. Okay, good. We can move on. All right. So this is what happens. Like I, I, I open up this really complex piece, right? It looks like she's just she she lived near Chernobyl. I hate to say it. Right, but this gets pretty complex, right? So what you end up having is you have your layers panel, and even as I kind of show you more of the layers panel right over here, you see a number of uh, layers in, in here that I can turn on and off. And these are just different vector versions I was working with because I was experimenting a lot just to kind of see you know, the different effects that I could get. Okay, so I actually want to go to the flyout menu under panel options, right? So uh, typically I can, you know, see these thumbnails, but all these thumbnails need to be redrawn, okay? So just keep that in mind. This is gonna take, you know, some CPU cycles to redraw these. So what you can do if you're comfortable with this is still going to the flyout menu. Let me make sure you guys can see this. Going to the flyout, oh, good Lord, help us all. Ooh. Go into this little flyout menu. Taking a look at my email. Right, this other stuff. Uh, go into this flyout menu. Panel options. And uh, you could turn off layer thumbnails so there aren't they aren't being redrawn. Okay, so I actually happen to know all those labels are just fine. So I'll click OK. They disappear. I don't need to worry about them being redrawn. And if you're dealing with performance issues, that's what you want to switch to. Okay. Anytime you're working on something really small, right, in a small area, like of this eye or whatever, you could always open up a new window. So view, help me. Window, new window, right? This is a separate window that I could put anywhere I want uh, of a specific view. 
So I could work over here, by the way, as I adjust this panel. I can kind of zoom in on this, right? And then for this view, I could actually see the whole artwork, okay? So that's a potential way to work. Rather than zooming in and out and having things redraw all the time, have a separate view up of your current project and you'll be just fine there. So that's what I typically do. Let's move on. So do you want to see the original of this? I can show you the original of this, by the way. I just vectorized this bad boy. Let me adjust this. Let me show you some other cool things. So I think this stuff's going to get you excited. Um, so let me throw you, show you original. The original of this image. I went through all of these uh, different outline modes here. Let's just all of these different image trace modes is what I did. And as I was doing this, things started to slow down a little bit, but that's what all those different layers are. I went through default, high quality, uh, high fidelity photo, uh, uh, low, low, low fidelity photo, all that fun stuff. So that's the original and kind of clip through those. Default, high quality. Look, this is the high quality vectorized version of this photo, which is awesome. Okay, here's the low fidelity or low quality. You know, here's the three colors. Here's the three colors uh, copy of it where I just kind of shifted it. 16 colors, shades of gray, on and on. There's my black and white logo to an image, silhouette. Doesn't do anything really for me. We can get into line art, which didn't work. Technical art, which really didn't work. You guys get the idea. All right, let's move on from there, guys. I'm gonna show you this as well. Let me just kind of switch back just to this blank screen and I'm just gonna draw something. I'm gonna draw a circle. There you go, here's our fancy circle. Um, and I kind of showed this a couple days ago, actually on Facebook Illustrator page. There are actually scripts available that can do a lot of fun things. So I'm gonna post a link to the chat Soon as I open it up. Uh, this is one I did on Monday, just real fast. Scripts, taking a simple circle. Let's go ahead and florify it, right? Let's just make it funky, right? Florify, right? By 100% clicking okay. And now we have all of a sudden a design that's actually it looks like a lot more fun than what I had before. And again, simple circle to something kind of exciting. All right. Um, so that was done right here. Scripts, F L E U R. Oh, here we go. John's, this guy, this guy, John uh, Undis did these scripts. Let me show you some more, right? So here's one, this is pretty cool. Let's just go ahead and flip this. Maybe I'll do, I don't know, something like that. I don't know. Maybe I'll make this really thick. These thick, a thick, fun shape, right? So that's what I have right now. Thick, fun shape, right? I could trigger this down. I could do a click and drag and can do a command D to duplicate, da, 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 da. right? Shortcut, power shortcut, right? You should know that. Uh, taking all these, let's duplicate them. Right, like that. I can duplicate that a couple more times, right? What if I wanna randomize all these, right? So what do you have to do? You have to go in and you're like, okay, I just gotta shrink this down, right? Shrink that down and it's not gonna look as good or is it? You know, but what I could do is I could select all these and another script is right in here. We could do a random resize of all these shapes. So the minimum will be like 20%, okay? Maximum will be 150%, right? And I've just randomized all those. I've randomized the size. 
Uh, okay, so that actually works out really well and I can go in and do that some more because I'm noticing they even need to have even greater random missity. There we go. And now you kind of get the idea. Um, Let's take these again, like, and again, these probably need to be like repositioned. These are kind of hard to grab, but let me just grab some of these, kind of move them around. What if I want to give all these a different color? Let me show you that again. These are just quick, quick optimizations. Things just to help you work faster is what, what I want to show you how to do. And there actually might be a randomized, randomized position. I have random uh, uh, resize. I have random opacity, which I could do. There should be a randomized position out there. Um, I'm surprised I don't have that loaded. But let's do random opacity from 20 to 100. There's random opacity. Let's change the color now. Check this out really fast. Again, this is just you know just making things easy. So check this out. I'm gonna select uh, red. Uh, orange, yellow, uh, blue. Sure, why not? Okay, so I'm gonna go to file, and all I did is hold down the command key or control key on a Windows machine, and I can come in here and say, hey, you know what? Uh, random swatches based on the fill. Okay, so random swatches fill. I have those colors selected, those four colors, and I've randomized the fill color for all of those okay keep in mind the transparency is also random but let's just do a series let's just do a click and drag for all these colors let's do a lot of colors actually we might get more variety random swatches fill click and sure enough i get all these random colors so um uh you can't keyboard shortcut your scripts which would be awesome i wish you could that would be cool. I mean, actually, you sh if you write the, you might be able to write the script in order to, um, uh, you know, assign a shortcut to it. Another fun one, by the way, let me, let's do this real fast. Let's take this, let's take, just grab a circle, zoop, really fast. Here's my fun circle, right? Selecting all those uh, different like uh, diamond shapes and I'll go into scripts and you know to like position everything along this circular path would be a pain in the butt. But what I can do is I can say, hey, you know what? This script will actually distribute on the path, right? Click distribute on path. Uh, wait for it, previewing it, right? And now everything, oops, if you don't hit cancel, everything will be distributed on a path. Clicking okay. Wait, oh dang it, sorry. What you can do is you can extract groups too, which is cool. The big thing is for this one, you actually need to make sure that the shape that you want um, to be the shape that get, is the path needs to be on top. There we go. Right, so you guys, anybody know that's, uh, you know, once you're doing anything like that, if you've ever tried to do something like this, you know, manually, it's a pain in the butt, but this was pretty easy thanks to scripts. So we know scripts and optimization in Illustrator. The next thing I wanna talk about real fast, I'm just gonna go ahead and, you know, let's just keep one of these for fun. Let's grab this guy. What's up, Tim? How you doing, buddy? Uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, extensions that you can add. So Astute Graphics has a ton, by the way. Right, I won't get into all these. I'll just use like maybe Mirror Me because I've been using that a little bit more lately. Like here is my shape. I can bring that over here and uh, turn on Mirror Me, right? It's gonna create that mirror of that shape. So I can use the bracket keys 
and now I'm duplicating this, uh, right? I got four different quadrants. As I click once, I can say, apply to layer, but make it persistent. So now as I start to add other things like a circle, right? You can see it start to add a, or work across all of them and add them, uh, you know, sort of across all of them as well, right? Is that cool and easy to work with? I think so. Aside from the color being super annoying, you can see what it can do pretty easily just by using Mirror Me and Astute Graphics shout out. Uh, so when you download the scripts, I post this link. This is just one, by the way. So this is just W-U-N-D-E-S. So when I mentioned, wait for it. Zoop. Let's see which ones, here's Flurify for instance. Here's the Flurify JS file. So you could just do a save link as JavaScript to my desktop. And ultimately it's gonna go in the scripts folder. Applications, it should tell you right in here, by the way. So here you go. This is where it, this is where it tells you to put it. So I don't even have to go there. Uh, presets and then your scripts folder. So that's where it goes. Cool. You don't have to worry about me taking you there. Now you get it. Let's move on to Photoshop. Right? So boom, we got all this fun stuff thanks to good old astute graphics. Just allowing us to make cool stuff. And this is where we get a little lost. Yes, there's so much stuff we could do in here. All right, so let's continue on. Let's jump over to, uh, to Photoshop. So I can copy this, I can go into Photoshop. That's something I was working on, file new. Geo in the house. What's up, Gus? Brand new team member in the house. Everybody, Augustus Martin. Yay, buddy. I will see you there next week, my friend. Well, actually, no, I don't even know if you're in San Francisco now that I think about it. Or if you will be there. I feel like I'm there all the time. People think I work there, but I do not. Right, so now, now we're in Photoshop. So let's talk about optimizing Photoshop, right? So we have something like this project that I have right here. This one's actually pretty complex. Let's go to this one here, right? So what I have here in Photoshop is I have all these crazy layers, right? As I was kind of like mapping the these flowers to like her skin and all this crazy stuff, Everything got really deep, and it's not even that bad, but typically my files, uh, maybe the resolution isn't that high, but they're super deep because they're interfaces or just artwork that has like 200 layers. In fact, pro tip, if you wanna see how many layers you have, click right down here, and I'm sorry you can't see that. Let me move this up. This one doesn't have that many layers, but let's click right here. We can go down to layer count and we can see it has 36 layers. I can go and show you some even more advanced. This one. But basically what you wanna do is you wanna optimize Photoshop for the workflow that you're doing. So if you're a photographer and you're dealing with these really high resolution images that are really big, but they're just like maybe three or five layers or something, you wanna make sure you optimize for the large and flat as opposed to the narrow and deep, okay? And you can do that in Photoshop. So if we take a look at this one, of course, much more complex. How many layers does it have? It has 280. So that's kind of like more what I end up with. So as I work on this other one, it's gonna get pretty complex, okay? But since it's gonna be so deep, what you could do is you get a Photoshop preferences into do, 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 performance. Going into performance right here, performance. And right over here, it says, hey, you know what? What are you trying to do? How do you want me to optimize Photoshop? You want me to 
Are you using like huge pixel dimensions because you're doing photography? Uh, maybe default for photos or web and UI, which is gonna be the content that's really deep. And what happens is it changes the history states and cache levels. So if I take this default photo, it's gonna increase my cache levels and the tile size. And then also for huge pixel dimensions, it increases the cache levels as well. So this is the, the goal here is to take the guesswork out of what these numbers do uh, by just giving you this easy way to click and change these accordingly right so i do usually do web and ui design because my layers are so deep um 3d i have that all set up because this is actually a 3d file by the way uh that's what's going on here it's like i'm actually able to um you know adjust the ray tracer and shadow quality and different things like that because I've changed the preferences, right? Because again, this is 3D, guys. I'm trying to I'm trying to fake you out, right? If I take a look right in here, come on, where is it? I know this is. So this is it. Let me just double. -click. That's that's that. Right here. This is actually a 3D shape, by the way. Newbie, what up from Cali, Kimlin. Everybody welcome Kimlin. Welcome, it's good to see you. Good to see you. This segment sponsored by Nike, not really. But Kimlin, did you know that you can obviously, you could have 3D in Photoshop like I have now? Uh, this is actually kind of cool. I just took all these images because what I wanted to do is I wanted to wrap her in flowers. If I could find that file, help me. I wanted to wrap her in flowers. Rather than pushing all those pixels around, I said, hey, you know what? Let's just go ahead and find a model in that same pose and wrap the flower, put that, put the flower texture on that 3D model. So as I rotate this around, you could see that she's just made of a bunch of flowers. Just, just like most most females don't don't give me war don't get all weird guys i'm just saying women are made of flowers and men are like made of like what is it puppy dog tails like snails and all these gross things and women are made of flowers so that's uh, you know that's just kind of showing you basically 3d in photoshop what i did here by the way since it's optimized for 3d um, I've done some additional things right in here. So I'll show you the layers panel in case you're curious. Are you guys curious about this stuff? I don't know. Let's take a look. Um, for this object, Uh, the, what it should be is it's, it is a, oh, you know what? It's the texture. That's what I did. So right in here for the, the texture for the body, I, that's what I've done is I've just kind of removed some things. So I got to figure out which one is actually the body. I've removed, um, the transparency, obviously, and that's what you got. All right, so right in here, this diffuse texture, opacity is set to 100%. Let's drop that, oh, that's right. I hate it when you work on a project, you're like, oh yeah, I don't remember how I did that. <laughs> here we go, let's go into edit texture because in the side of this texture, it's all transparent and that's where that's coming from. But the reason optimization is so important is because Photoshop is so powerful and Illustrator that, uh, you know, you can have a Photoshop file inside of a Photoshop file inside of a Photoshop file, and things get really complex. Because what do I have? I have a, 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 a PSD that's a texture that's on top of a 3D, a 3D object, and the 3D object is inside of another PSD. But this is where the transparency is coming from, just kind of slapped all those various flowers on it, said, hey, you know what, wrap those flowers around 
this object and there you have it, right? Uh, let's move on from here. I'm curious if you guys have any, um, uh, uh, hey, Shuvo Arman, good to see you, my friends, from Bangladesh. Awesome to have you from so far away. Very cool to have you. I'm curious as to, to know what, uh, what plugins or what, uh, how you've kind of tricked out Photoshop as well. Just so you know, Photoshop can add, you can add scripts to Photoshop too. Um, I actually don't have any, to be honest with you. I, I showed them all in Illustrator, but, uh, We can take a look at, I'm kind of curious if you guys have any favorite uh, Photoshop scripts. And if you take a look, I just did a quick search on Photoshop scripts um, just online. The number one Photoshop script is this corner editor. And this is what happens. Sometimes with a popular uh, script, we'll just bake that technology right into Photoshop. So this is a corner editor. Yes, we could adjust the radius. Um, but this one does additional, uh, oh, I would give you, I give you a dollar if you tell me what that, what that shape is. I can't remember, but these are the different radiuses that you can add. So a corner editor, um, split to layers, sprite generator. Yeah, I could send this out. But even it come, when it comes to those corners, by the way, if you, I'm not sure if you guys are aware of this, as I draw out a, uh, a rectangle in this case, or a square, right off to the side, I already have those controls right over here. So I can round those accordingly to say 300, right? And you can see it change accordingly, or I could scrub right on it and change that, okay? So what that um, plugin does was just give you basically different corners. Some cham chamfer, boom, Nate Galloway gets a hundred dollars in, and by I mean dollars, I mean doll hairs, as you would say, if I was 12, I would say that. Chamfer corners. <laughs> you get a hundred doll hairs, cause I'm 12, and that's funny to me as a 12 year old. But you are a smart man, Nate. Good seeing you, man. I haven't seen your name in a bit, but I can't say that, you know, that I'm always on uh, YouTube. Indentation radius. Um, a lot of times what I used to do, by the way, is I'd, I'd start to draw shapes. And as I made a unique shape, as I'm doing, trying to do right now, let's just go ahead and make something else. Right, so here's a unique shape. Um, I, I used to save these, by the way, like this particular shape. I'm like, okay, this is a logo that I typically want to use a lot. Well, I used to open up the, the custom shape tool and I'd want to put it inside of this these custom shapes. So you can actually expand this out and say, hey, you know, just add everything. All the basic elements that you typically need, like a heart or a star or a burst or whatever, um, they're all within this area. Custom shapes, fly out menu, all, it'll show everything. And then from there, what I used to do is go ahead and define custom shape okay so the for the common things that you use a light uh, uh you can go ahead and do that and say this is the logo that i'm going to use all the time okay and that's how i used to do things but now actually what i do is i just drag it into my library panel and now it's gonna be not only available to me in photoshop but illustrator after effects yada 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 Chamfer is a line cut and not a curved one. I thought chamfer was the curved one. Ah, oh, help us all. Ah. <laughs> uh. 
<sighs> I don't know then. There's like one thing I want to know, which is what that is called. You can call them inverted rounded corners, but that's not what we're going for. So anyway, enough of that. You can save shapes. We've optimized Photoshop. I was gonna find some scripts. There are a couple scripts in here that I honestly have not used uh, in a while. Delete all empty layers, sure. Um, what I'll sometimes do is I will um, use bridge to load images into a stat one stapped um, PSD. So that's just, you know, when it comes to, I guess a, a pro tip or power shortcut, that's what I do. All right. Okay. People. Like anytime I have a lot of images that I want to load up into, um, into one PSD, I would select them all, go to tools, say, hey, you know what? Load files into Photoshop layers. That's typically what I do. So again, just a pro tip. Oh, I haven't hit enter. But now it gets loaded in. Clement, how you doing? From India. Ooh, there's a nice trick to open layered Photoshop files as a single flattened file without affecting your original layer PSD. Just hold down the shift alt and click on your PSD. Shift alt. I'm gonna do that, my friend, right here. So this is the one I wanted to open up earlier. So if I hold down shift alt and then just like open it, can I double click? Read the composite data instead. Clicking OK. Boom. Creative Spirit gets another hundred doll hairs. I wish I had prizes for you. But congratulations, buddy. You are a good man or woman. I appreciate that. I do need cold brew, buddy, but it's also like 2.30 in the afternoon. Here's another another trip tip I've learned as well is uh, if you right click, um, on the file name, you can reveal this in Finder. So if you don't know where a file is, you can just right click on the name. Show me where it's at. And it will open it up and show you where it's at. Another thing you can do is you could take a file and say, for instance, for one of these, not this one, not that one. Um, if you happen to have a file and uh, you want to turn it into a template, you could do that. So here it is. Here's my file. It's going to have some text and this is going to be icon right on or name, whatever you want to call it. You can turn this if you just hold on, wait for it. Saving this file. And this particular file, when it's on... Close this. Hold on. I haven't done this in a while either. So Photoshop template, right? PST, is that right? Photoshop template. 
basically what I'm doing is I, if I have a file that I want to be a template, because basically I never want to change this. I never want to change this file. I don't want anybody to mess with it, right? So here it is, I can come in here and I can change the name to John, right? Ah, is it PSDT? Yeah, it's P, it must be PSDT. <laughs> oh, it's driving me nuts. Anyway, yes, I can go ahead and make that John without the H. Uh, another tip, you can go ahead and sample colors outside of, of Photoshop. Uh, click and drag the eyedropper tool to sample, uh, sample any color on the interwebs. So eyedropper tool, click. PSDD, PSDT, so that would have done it. I've never done this before, so am I just uh, clicking? Click and drag. Yeah, I'd have to try that. Happy to try that sometime. Because currently it's not quite working for me, but good call, sure. PSDT, yep. Cool. Do you know also when you download any files that are uh, stock templates, they actually do exist somewhere. So um, if I double click, let's see this one. This looks really cool. All right. So I can right click and I can reveal in Finder for this file that is actually just a preview file and discover that it's on my desktop somewhere and here's where all my um, uh, stock um, preview files are you can see them right in here cool I'm not sure why you need to know that Drag the eyedropper tool on your internet browser. Creative Spirit, I don't know if that actually works on Mac, to be honest with you, because I swear I just tried it, right? So here I am, click eyedropper tool, right? I'll drag this over, right? I'll have this up, like it's just not working, to be honest with you. Move this over. Eyedropper tool, works, 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 works. Doesn't, 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 doesn't. Uh, it might be a PC thing. Minimize Photoshop window and click and drag eyedropper. Do I have to hold, do I have to hold it down? I don't know. I don't know. I actually had a friend who made an extension that would sample colors from anywhere on your screen. But, uh, I am slowing down guys. There's probably more things that if, if, uh, if we had a chance, I'd kind of go over it. Uh, optimizing typically I think it's all pretty straightforward I'm trying to look through any of this other stuff that we might want to give in to get into a uh, couple other extensions but none that I really use yeah John I guess it doesn't work I guess it doesn't work on Mac that's it I'm getting a PC it's a PC thing Um, 
Another thing in terms of tips, by the way, I'll use the um, crop tool. Just if you wanted to, cropping, obviously you're using crop tool to crop things, right? But anytime you just wanna make the canvas larger, I'll use the crop tool. So selecting it, I'll just go ahead and make the canvas larger and just making sure I'm not gonna delete cropped pixels. And that's just an easy way to kind of make your canvas larger without going into your canvas size. You get it. Escaping out of that, that's all I got for you. I'll probably have more things, but uh, I'm interested in any pro tips you have because that's kind of what this turned into uh, just because that stuff gets to be pretty darn important when it comes to uh, Photoshop and Illustrator, right? Pro tips. So, uh, yes. I like that. And typically when I end up sampling colors, I'll just drop them inside of a good old, um, my libraries panel. So they're always with me so you can see how messy that gets. But at least I know the colors that I use and like. All right. <sighs> Sorry, I've never yawned in a stream, but I just did. I apologize. I'm gonna let you guys go. Uh, thank you so much for watching. This is being recorded. Check it out anytime next week, Tuesday through Thursday. We're going to have an Adobe XD stream. Should be a good time. So look for that. Um, hopefully you guys have a wonderful weekend. I think I will. Got to go pick up my car from the shop. And again, today is sponsored by Nike. Not really. Thanks so much, everybody. Ihajo, good seeing you. Good seeing you, Tim and Nate. Creative spirit. Totally want to know your name someday. Uh, John. Yeah, buddy. Michael Shays. Good to see you, man. You guys have a wonderful evening and a wonderful weekend. Be kind to one another, and we will talk to you soon. We will see you on Tuesday. Thanks, guys. See ya.